Hello world and welcome back to another video. This is a topic that I have been wanting to touch since the beginning of the channel. There are a few debates in our industry that people do not fully agree on. Should you mock in your unit tests? View binding versus find view by ID among others. Then there are some things that we've grown to settle on such as favor composition over inheritance or that singletons are bad. Well, that last one is what we're going to discuss in this video. You see, in the past 10 plus years or so, the general consensus is that singletons are considered an anti-pattern. Most articles or posts are presenting singletons as something that we, as software engineers, should avoid. And most of the times, there are a few usual reasons accompanying the argument. So, we have grown to hate it. It is also low-key easy to hate it because hating it makes us look better as developers, as everyone agrees. As always, our take on everything should be that reality and theory are two different things. So, in theory, a singleton is probably bad. But in practice, could there be a place in our hearts and code bases for a disowned pattern like that? Let's find out. Let's take a step back first. What is a singleton? Any class that is created only once throughout our application is a singleton. So if you have a class named configuration and we create only one configuration object, then it immediately classifies as a singleton. That's it. We use a lowercase s for that singleton. There is, however, a more advanced definition as singleton also refers to the singleton pattern which we usually spell with a capital S. And this is the pattern that has grown to be considered an anti-pattern. In the 1994 book, Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software, commonly known as the Goff book, Gang of Force, the singleton pattern is introduced to the world. That's the singleton with a capitalized S. The book goes over how to ensure that a class will have only one instance created. So singleton with a capital S is a technique, a pattern, used to create singletons with a lowercase s and makes them accessible from everywhere. Here's how a Goff singleton looks like. Okay, this is the pattern described in the book in its basic form. As you can see, the constructor is private. There is no way of creating it. But using the getInstance method, which is static and can be invoked from everywhere, we either create the object the first time we call it, or we reuse the cast object from that point onwards. The pattern enforces the rules. So a singleton is a pretty simple idea. Ensure that we have only one instance of a class, OK, and then access it from everywhere. A ready-to-go class that we can use all the time and leverage its functionality. When I first learned about this pattern, I was impressed. Wow, that's convenient, I thought. You need a place to store some configuration for the app? Boom, a singleton to access it from everywhere. Do you need to store an access key that will be used in many places? That's another instance of a singleton. I was happy, and from experience, that's the initial reaction for most developers when they are junior. Then, as you grow and learn about techniques to make your code something less than a spaghetti mess, you begin to understand the limitations. Here's an example that I like using for parallelism. Back when phones did not have a passcode, it was super convenient to log in, but the catch was that there was a lack of security. Anyone could just pick up your phone and access it. Then, PIN and passcodes were introduced, and convenience dropped since you now had to type it in all the time to log in, but at least security was on point. Nobody could use your phone unless they knew the passcode. We later implemented good biometric methods such as fingerprint or face scanners, and we reached a very good balance between convenience and security. Singletons are the equivalent of having no passcode at all, super convenient but not secure, and the respective adjective for the code parallelism of secure is clean and testable. But why? What are the problems of singletons? What makes them not so clean? Let's go over the most obvious ones that having an always accessible instance of an object can create. First problem, and the biggest one, 
global state available from everywhere but but this sounds like an advantage right well the singleton's biggest strength is also its biggest weaken weakness having the ability to access an object from everywhere makes it super easy to destroy architectural boundaries you can make an api call from a view class which belongs in the ui layer you can access some specific business logic inside a class that handles the disk persistence mechanism in the infrastructure layer your discipline is the only thing separating you from abusing this power and that's where the problems kick in you see in the real world i have seen that initial care with which developers approach such a matter can dissolve easily in favor of let's apply this quick fix and we'll refactor later or maybe a new junior developer that has yet to face this concept joins the team and starts messing with the singleton toys I can name a few more ways this can go south, but you get the idea. The important thing to remember is that you can never rely only on discipline, as there are many ways it can be violated. Next, another problem. The singleton is a liar. Let's say you have two classes, A and B, and they are instantiated normally. You never pass A to B, neither B to A. Now, is there any way those two classes know about each other's existence? Of course not. Their paths are two parallel lines, never crossing. So you can be certain that class A does not use B at any point. This is very important with dealing with code, when eliminating bugs or trying to figure out how an existing system works. Now, let's make A and B singletons. Can you ever be sure that A does not use B? No. It could be hidden, lurking in the shadows of a method, but A can access B. And of course it can. This is what a singleton is all about. Access from everywhere. So we have lost a very important part of our control over the code base. And one more problem that we're going to mention in this video. Testing singletons is practically a no-go. Every test that uses a singleton needs it to start in an expected state or else the test will fail but another object might have mutated that singleton in a previous test. Next, singletons can slow down test suites as they prevent tests to run in parallel. And finally, if you add a new test and it runs in the middle of the suite, another test may fail that runs after it. We can really go on for hours discussing how singletons can cause problems. So, what can we get out of this? And Apart from the fact that singletons can cause a lot of issues in our long-term code maintainability and quality. What now? Do we completely give up on the idea? Well, no. Of course, it's very important to be able to have an object that we do not need more than one copies of. What's the solution? Repeat after me. Our friend is dependency injection. Great. I have made a mini-series of videos explaining what dependency injection is as a fundamental concept. Well, it's how we can make singletons work without marrying their problems. We create only one instance of an object and then we wear it through our code base by injecting it in every class that needs it. In essence, this is a singleton and dependency injection frameworks like Dagger have specific annotations to create objects that are only once instantiated. The important difference is that such a singleton is not accessible from everywhere. The singleton is deliberately passed in objects that we need it to be passed. Also, this type of singleton is not responsible for its own creation. We are in control, we remain in control, and we do not bite the bait that having an easily accessible object is. So, as a conclusion, remember that at, at the end of the day, the semantics are not important. What someone calls a singleton could very well be a cleverly wired graph of objects within, that does not serve as global state, but they are controlled with a dependency injection mechanism. Our goal as software engineers and architects is to respect software boundaries and make sure that our code is readable by exposing the important behavior rather than giving it a place to hide. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.